the file that I provided on Classroom was that zip file, right? Uh, let's check here. Is that young Alistair? Yes, it is. Oh, how's it going, man? Uh, we're just busy opening up After Effects and Illustrator Salon. All right. Um, so presenting quickly, taking a look at the folder that I provided to you guys. It was the 2020 basic rig folder. Okay. Um, the footage for that inside that folder is um, footage. Okay. There's also the After Effects file that I want you guys to open without moving into a different folder. And then if we go inside of footage, layers, lip sync, we can double click on the illustrator layer here. So it's footage, layers, lip sync, lip sync class file. Open that up in the illustrator. Okay. Make sure I can see chat. <laughs> Ultra combo way. Mm. While we wait, your lip syncing um, videos are excellent. I'm really happy with uh, with this class's um, attempts for that. So um, yeah, you can just follow the uh, just follow the comments that I left on classroom for you dudes, and then we'll round that out. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at lip syncing today. Uh, you'll see on classroom I also gave you guys um, the ex an, an audio file. If I quickly go to our classroom. Um, scrolling down, I appended and edited the post on the 17th of May. I gave you the expected patronum file. That's what we'll be using as our audio guide today. Okay. Cool. So we can import that into After Effects when we get to that stage. Okay. Let me find where I put it. Mm, yeah, we're in week five already, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little bit scary. Okay, are we all in After Effects? Are we all got Illustrator open? We're going to take a look at After Effects first. Okay, so taking a look at our character here inside of After Effects, I just want to show you the different layers that we've got here. Um, then we're going to take a look at how Illustrator can affect um, the asset files inside of After Effects. Then I'm going to introduce you to three new concepts. All right, the first one is going to be um, mats and masks. All right, um, I did post a tutorial sort of explaining that a little bit better uh, in the Discord chat. Um, I can put it on Classroom if you guys want it, or if I haven't already, can't remember. <coughs> um, and then. I have, uh, and then I'm going to introduce um, <coughs> the time remapping. Sorry, dude, I've got something stuck in my throat. Um, we're going to introduce the time remapping, and then I'm going to give you guys an example of how we go about working with the actual lip syncing here. Okay, so taking a look at my layers, layers one, two, and three are null objects. All right, currently nothing is parented to them. But they are there so that I can um, show you guys how we're going to parent that a bit later. Okay, so we set that up for you. Layer four is our mouth shapes. All right, now the mouth shapes, you'll see the layer is quite short. All right, and that's because this is a composition. You can tell by this little icon over here. Okay, so if I double click on mouth shapes, it'll open up over here for us. And if you hit spacebar, you'll see it plays through all the different mouth shapes. Okay, so <clears throat> we don't have to worry about doing anything inside of this composition. I can just hover over if you see where my mouse is. Here's the mouth shape tab to the left of that. If I click, it'll bring me back to my main composition. Okay, uh, so we don't have to do anything inside of that composition. We are going to be working on top of the layer. Okay, then these layers here, the magenta ones, assets one, two, and three, these layers are blank. All right, when I open up Illustrator and show it to you guys, you'll understand why. Uh, then we have our lid left top, lid left bottom, pupil left, eye left. We have our top eyelid, bottom eyelid, pupil right, and eye right. Okay, now our character is looking pretty hideous. So let's dive over into Illustrator and we're going to adjust this here. Okay, so 
<clears throat> the first thing that we can do is quickly just drag and select our eyelids. Okay. And then double clicking on the color picker here. I'm just going to go, I'm going to do like a green today. Let's have like a green like that. And then I'll change the color of the body to a little bit darker so that those eyelids pop for us. Okay. Cool. So once we've changed those colors, we can actually then get After Effects and Illustrator to talk to each other, and then they can update that information. Okay, so if I overwrite this save file once I've made my changes, Command or Control S, okay, diving back into After Effects, you'll see that it then updates for us, which is pretty cool, right? So back in my day, my old man stories, you would have to re-import files if you wanted to make changes, and then you'd have to replace the files, which is a bit of a mission. All right. Uh, one last thing that I just want to talk about in the Illustrator, you'll see that these are the blank um, asset layers. All right. Um, these layers are here if you want to add anything to the character. All right. So if you want to add like a bow tie or a hat or anything like that, if you choose to use this character for your personal lip sync, those three layers are there for you. So just make sure to use those. They've already been imported into After Effects. So as long as you don't create any new layers and as long as you don't relabel any of these layers, any changes to the assets that you make will automatically be updated inside of After Effects. Okay, it's pretty cool, at least I think so. All right, so let's dive in here and we'll take a look at a couple of things. Okay, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all the layers that I'm not working with. All right, so I'm just going to turn their visibility off. So I'm going to grab layers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. I'll turn their visibility off and I'll just lock those. I'm not going to hide them because we're going to start duplicating some layers. Right? And when we duplicate layers, if we have layers that are shy, sometimes those duplicates will be sitting like one layer or two layers above where you actually think it is. And that can cause a lot of confusion. All right, so we're not going to uh, shy anything just yet. Um, our lids, our eyelids, so that's layer eight and nine. Um, as well as our pupil for now. So that's layers 8, 9, 10, and then 12, 13, 14. We can lock those as well. So literally only the eye left and the eye right layers are currently um, not locked. Okay. Are we all good? We've all changed our colors. We've locked all the layers except for layer 11 and 15, and we're ready to kick some ass. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll assume that that is. Uh, I'll assume that that is you guys ready. Okay, dope. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce introduce you guys to mats and masks, and we're going to be using these eye layers as the sort of mask that we're going to be using. Okay, so just give you, uh, to give you guys an idea, it's very similar to how clipping masks work in Photoshop. All right, so how this is going to work is after I've duplicated my eye, once I tell After Effects to pay attention to that eye and to use it as a mask, then our eyelids will only become visible when they overlap with that eye, when that information covers, uh, sort of like overlaps, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna grab both my eye layers, hitting Control or Command D for duplicate. All right, there we go. So now we have eye L2, I R two. Okay, I'm going to relabel these because I don't want to have to keep saying I R two. So I am going to call this I R underscore mat one. All right, hence referred to as mat one. Mat spelled M A T T E. All right, and I'll relabel this uh, color. Let's just set it to none. Right, so it's got this gray bar on the timeline, so I can tell what it is. All right, I left two. I'm going to do the exact same thing, underscore, and we'll call this mat2. All right, now we're going to be working with six mat layers. All right, and I'll show you as we progress why that is the case. Um, but <clears throat> it's really not something that we need to stress about too much. So I'm going to walk you through how we go about doing the left-hand side of the face, the eyelids and the pupil, and then we'll do the right-hand side. Okay, so if you sort of just want to watch, I'll redo it after that, and then we can continue. All right, so once I have duplicated uh, and relabeled my eye left as mat2, I'm going to duplicate this three more times, uh, two more times. You'll see it automatically then creates layers mat3 and mat4 for us. Okay, 
So, mat two, I want to make sure is sitting directly above the top left eyelid. Okay, and obviously once we do that, the pupil inside will disappear, and that's just because we've copied the eye and like copied it over um, over that. Okay, set these to none so that I know what I'm working with. Mat three and four as well. Okay, none. Cool. We're going to take mat number three and we're going to place it over my left eyelid bottom. All right. And then I'm going to grab mat four and just move it up one layer so it's sitting on top of the pupil, the left pupil. Okay. So if I read it out the way that we've currently got it, layers one down to seven have remained the same. Layer eight is now my mat, my second mat. Layer 9 is my left top eyelid. We then have layer 10, which is my third mat. Lid left bottom is below that on layer 11. Layer 12, mat 4, sitting above layer 13, which is our left pupil. And then there's the left eye that we used. And we can lock that because we don't need to work with it anymore for now. Okay. We all good. No questions so far. We're ready to do something dope. I reckon so. Cool. So I'm going to unlock layers 13, 11, and 9. Right, so all the layers that are currently sitting below a matte layer. Okay. Uh, let me just check chat here quickly. All good. Dope. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do here, right, we're used to this information that we're working with. We've got our shy options. Um, We've got our effects options and we've got our parent link options, okay? But if you follow my mouse down to the bottom left of our timeline, there is a little button there that says toggle switches forward slash modes, okay? So if you click on that, you're going to get a different set of information, okay? From the far right, parent link is still the same. Center, these are what we're going to be working with. It is called our track mats. All right, if you hover over the TRKMAT. And then our modes, right? Now, the modes we don't have to worry about at all. These are essentially the same modes that you have inside of Photoshop. So that's your overlay, hard light, um, the sort of things that you were introduced to in your Photoshop for film last term. Okay. So with layers 9, 11, and 13, I'm going to go to the little drop down in the center, the track mat, and I'm going to select the very first option, alpha mat. Okay, once I do that, everything's going to disappear, and that is perfectly fine. It still exists, but it only exists when it overlaps with that eye information. Okay, pretty fucking cool. What we've done with the eyelid is we've also made sure that it's not going to appear unless it's inside of the eye. Okay, so I'll do the same for the right eye. You guys can follow along. Just let me know if you do need me to slow down or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to lock layers 8 down to 13. All right. Uh, so we're done with the left-hand side of the face. I'm going to unlock layer 15, unlock layer 16, unlock layer 17, and now we can start duplicating our mats again. Okay. So layer 18 is our first right-hand side mat. And what I'm going to do is hit Command or Control D, Let's duplicate that. So now it's IR mat two. All right, so we can now distinguish between our map numbers with the L that comes before or the R that comes before. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate that twice more. We remember that we need three, one for each eyelid and one for the pupil. All right, so if I get these into the correct position so I can read them out to you. Uh, let me just check here, pupil, mat one, two, and three. I've got an extra mat, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so currently layer 15 is mat four for the right-hand side. Layer 16 is my uh, eyelid top. Layer 17 is my mat number three. Number 18 is my bottom eyelid. And then we have 19, which is the mat for our pupil. The pupil is sitting on layer 20. Okay, so again, selecting layers 6, 19, and 20, all the layers sitting below our mat layers. We'll hit the little drop down here in the track mat. We'll set to alpha, and we can test that we've done it correctly. 
if everything overlaps and is not visible outside the bounds of the eyeball. Okay. Are we good? Are you guys following so far? Can you repeat that? Definitely. All right. So I'm going to just redo the right-hand side of the eye. Uh, and then it can be applied to the to the left hand side. Okay, so I've got my my layer 18 currently, which is mat number one. I'm going to duplicate that twice, once and twice. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to move layer 18, which is mat number three for the right hand eye, and I'm going to put it above layer 15, which is my top right eyelid. Okay, grabbing layer 19, which is mat two, I'm going to drop that over my lid right bottom and then my eye right mat one i'll drop over the pupil okay cool so far i'll then select layers 16 18 and 20 so these are all the layers that are sitting below the layers we've labeled as mats and i'm going to select alpha all right alpha mat john you good did you catch it that time Anyone else that I can re-explain for or anything like that? All good? Cool. <coughs> okay. Yo, sorry, I'm sure I'm deafening you guys. <coughs> um, got the Rona. So <clears throat> I'm going to unlock all my layers except for my head because now comes the time that we're going to be parenting. Okay. So if I turn on the visibility for layers 1, 2, 3, and 4, all right, we have our pupils null. Okay, so that obviously means that we're going to grab layer 20 and layer 13. Those are our two pupil layers. Okay, and using my parenting, I'm going to just parent those to my pupil null so that that drives my eye around. Okay, pretty cool. We then have our top eyelids and bottom eyelids nulls. All right, so those are fairly easy. We are only going to parent um, the actual eyelid layers themselves. Okay, we're not going to be parenting the mats to anything. All right, so let's grab our top eyelids. So that is layer 9 and layer 16. All right, so both of our top eyelids, and I'm going to parent that to the top eyelids now. All right, so when I bring that down, it will drive my eyelids. Okay, same thing for the bottom eyelids. So that is going to be layer 11 and layer 18. All right, so layer 11 and layer 18. And I'll parent that to the bottom eyelids. All right, and that then allows me to do like that. Okay, cool. So that's us so far. That, that is where we need to be at this point. Have we all parented? Are we ready to create a null object to drive our face for us? I'll assume so. Fantastic. Okay, so we need to make a new null object. I deliberately didn't do it for you just so that we can practice. All right, so we're going to go up to layer, new, null object. All right, layer, new, null object. Alternatively, if you right click in any dead space inside of our timeline, so if I drag this up and right click down here, I can also say new, null object. All righty. So I'm going to click on that. It is going to create a layer for us at the very top called null2. It will make that null object over here for us in the center of our screen. And with that information, we can now check um, what to do. OK, there the stream catches up. OK, so I'm going to relabel my top null there. And I tend to just call the most important or the nulls that are driving the most things my God null. You're welcome to call it face null or Jesus null or anything you like. Okay. The next step after relabeling is I obviously want to center my anchor point. Hopefully remember we use the pan behind tool for that. And once I've centered it, I'm just going to drag it out so that it's a large rectangle. I'm going to put it in the center of the pupil. No, like that. Okay. Technically, wherever the nose goes, the face is obviously following, right? So this is kind of where our nose is going to be. Nose. All right. 
Then I can just grab my mouth shape composition layer there and I'm going to shift it up so it's not so far away. All right, and then this is where it's nice and easy, right? What we're going to do is select layer two all the way down to layer 22. Okay, and then we're going to deselect all the layers that are currently already parented to something. All right, so that means that we are deselecting layers 10, 12, 14, 17, and 19. Okay, the rest gets parented to our god now. All right, this makes sure I can move my entire face, and it also makes sure that my mats and masks move with everything so that our pupils and eyelids will always be visible wherever we move to. Okay, so that means that I'll be animating a couple of options here. Seems as though I accidentally parented my right pupil to the god now, so I'm just gonna parent that back to pupils. So yeah, always good to test. Always good to make sure that everything is working. Thankfully, this is a fairly simple rig, so it wouldn't be too difficult to fix. Um, but obviously, we're lazy, and we don't want to put in the extra effort. Okay. Cool. So once that's done, we're literally only going to be animating layers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, and we're not even going to be using the eyelids yet. So we can, at this point, start selecting a lot of layers here. So I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to deselect layer one, and I'll deselect layer five. All right, so layer one is my god null. Layer five is my mouth shapes. The rest of my layers, if I hit toggle switches and modes again, I'll make these shy, and I'll lock them. Okay, and that's just going to clear up some space. I can make my, my head layer shy as well. All right. Cool. Are we all okay? We're all doing okay. We're all where we're at, where I'm at. I assume so. Cool. Uh, all good, all good. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> before we before we continue, if I can try and uh, just maybe simplify the idea of mats and masks, I remember being very confused when I started. Um, I kind of got confused between what layer needed to be on top. Okay, so if I quickly just take a look at these two layers here, right? The easiest way to think about mats and masks is that the information you want to see is always going to be one layer below the mask or the mat. Okay, so that mat is setting where the information will be visible. The layer below that is the information that will be visible. Okay, you can tell which layer is which um, by their little symbol next to the name. So we've got, uh, by my mat two, we've got a little white circle in the square. And then for my left eyelid, or yeah, for my left eyelid top, uh, you'll see I've got a little black circle in that square. Right, so that just shows you that my bottom layer, my eyelid top, is being masked by the layer above it. Okay, so it's also a very good way to make sure that we haven't parented or masked anything to the wrong thing. Okay, so going back to shying all of that jazz, let's take a look at our mouth shapes. Okay, um, let me just check chat. Okay, dope. Cool, so when you select your mouth shapes, remember we're not double clicking. If we double click, it takes us inside of our mouth shape composition. We can just click on the little tab here to the left and it will take us back here. Now you'll notice that if you have your layer selected, we have this yellow square or rectangle rather chilling around the mouth. Okay, this is a mask. Now, masks work slightly differently than mats in the sense that we can not only animate them, um, but they are sort of, you, you apply them directly to the layer. All right, so we're not going to be like generating a layer and duplicating it and putting it on top. This mask works directly on top of the layer and reveals all the information inside of our square. All right, now what I want you guys to do is just simply click on the bottom vertices here. So that's the bottom left and right yellow squares, right? Holding down shift to select them both. If you drag them down, you'll see that we actually have our text visible over here. Okay, so that text is what we see here. 
in our mouth shapes comp. All right, I hid it for you so that we can introduce masks. Once that is done, we can leave it. Okay. Is everyone okay? Just to give you a heads up, working with masks can be very frustrating in the sense that, <clears throat> oh, I can make my god null shine as well. Uh, if I double click on the mask, you'll see I get this bounding box over here. Now this obviously allows me to rescale it, but it makes it very difficult to work with uh, if I only want to work with one point. Okay, so if you've double clicked it like this, but you only wanted uh, one vertex, we have to double click off of the shape over here, just like in an empty space. And then I'll deselect the layer by clicking one more time. And then you'll see you've got your round uh, points, which then become squares when you interact with them. Okay, are you all good? Are we all right? We've applied and adjusted the mask so we can see the, the label for the mouth shape. Yes, great. Cool, so obviously we can't animate a lip sync if we don't have audio, right? So I'm just gonna double click in my project panel or I'm gonna hit Command or Control I or I'm going to go to File, Import, File and I'm going to select my Expector Patronum audio wave file. Okay, now the audio wave file, we don't have to do anything down here. I've deselected the Create Composition block here. I don't want a, a new composition for the file. And I'm just going to say OK, and I'm going to bring that in to my project panel. All right. OK, so once you've done that, you'll see that the project panel has been set up in a very neat fashion. All right, there's a lot of folders that can be collapsed. And this is typically how you would set up a project file in any kind of pipeline. All right, so you'll have a folder for the solids. This will normally be created for you as soon as you actually use the solid. We have the layer panels, which I created and then dumped all of the layer files in here from the lip sync and the character. Okay. Then I have my footage for audio. So I'm going to drag my expected Patronum file in there. All right. So that I can collapse it and hide it. And then I have my composition folder here, which again um, should be generated for you. Otherwise, you can always generate it yourself. Okay. You can make your folders by, you see where my mouse is? clicking on this little folder icon down here. Okay, so in a pipeline, you're always gonna have a solids folder, you're always gonna have a layers folder. Um, you'll always need to generate a footage folder. So I tend to make one for audio and one for visual. Um, you'll always have one for compositions and then as necessary, you'll just keep it nice and neat moving forward. Okay, so that's something that I'm going to be checking on as we progress into the third and fourth term. Alrighty, so, in order to use my Expector Patronum audio wave, I am going to simply just drag it down and drop it in my timeline. Alrighty. Cool. Have we all got our audio in our timeline? We're all ready to, to carry on. Yes, fantastic. All right. Look, I've got cigarettes. The best thing about COVID is I can smoke during class. Anyway, what I want you guys to do with this layer is we're going to click the little drop down to the far left and you'll see it says the word audio. Okay. And we'll click on the little drop down below that. We'll then see it says audio levels. Okay. Now, After Effects is perfectly compatible when it comes to editing audio. Um, I personally prefer working with Premiere Pro simply because... Um, when you scrub through audio in Premiere Pro, you actually get to hear it live. And as far as I know, you can't do that in After Effects. So how we listen to our audio footage is we hit spacebar, and that's going to run it through for us, all right? And then <clears throat> um, if you have a numpad or like a number pad uh, on your keyboard, the delete key next to the zero key on your numpad, that will play through the audio without playing the animation. Okay, so for me personally, um, I have to sort of hit caps lock. And typically when you hit caps lock, any new information that you generate will sort of be locked. So you won't see that animation. And um, then we'll only hear the audio. Okay, so we see our audio levels, hopefully. 
and we've got 0, 0, 0, 0,00 dB, right, decibels. We're going to set that up to 24. All right, reason being that the audio is a bit soft. So now we've got him actually screaming. Okay, and the reason why the mouse shapes are moving is simply because the, the composition is obviously being moved. So this doesn't match with the audio file yet. Okay, then below our audio options with the decibel levels is our waveform option. Okay, now the waveform option is super, super useful um, in the sense that it gives us a very clear visual idea of where the spikes in our conversation are. So typically these spikes here are when we generate a mouth sound that causes our lips to close and then we have that expulsion of air, all right? Um, and this is, as I said, just a visual cue for us to use, all right? So I don't necessarily want this excess audio information here. If I had plenty of effects on this, then they would all be there as well. So if you select any audio layer, any layer with sound, and you hit L twice, LL for Llama, it will bring up your waveform. Okay, now we've got two different waveforms. That's because this is a stereoscopic sound, so left and right earphones. Um, if, it was a, a mono, if it was a mono sound, then there would just be one. Okay, cool. Are you guys ready to start animating the mouth? Going to make something cool happen now. Oh, Jesus, sweet nicotine. Scream yes away. <laughs> okay, cool. So what I'm going to do here is we can see that my audio file is four seconds long. All right, so we don't need these extra two seconds at the end. So I'll hit N for NATO. Uh, and then I can right click on this work area bar. So if you hover over this gray bar here, it says work area, right click trim comp to work area. All right, so doing that one more time, I hit N. I can also drag it back and forth by simply using the slider. And if I hold down shift, it will lock to that um, indicator. Or I can hit N. NATO, right clicking on that gray bar, trim comp to work area. It's going to get rid of all that excess information for us. Alrighty. Now we are ready to begin doing something dope. So let's move back to the very beginning of our timeline. Let's select our mouth shape layer and let's right click on it. Okay. So right clicking here gives us pretty much all the different things that we can go and do to this object. So you can see if we go to like effects, we've got all of our different effects here. It's essentially the same thing as our effects presets over here. Okay. What we want to do is we want to go to time, which is the sixth option from the top. All right. So right clicking on mouth shapes, hovering over time, we are going to hit the very first option, enable time remapping. All right. Right clicking on the layer, hovering over time, enable time remapping. Okay. And when you do that, you'll see that your layer has changed. All right. In the timeline, it has now extended all the way. You can even see it extends beyond the end over here. All right. And it's given us two keyframes. These keyframes represent where the composition begins and ends. All right. So if, for example, I wanted this composition to take place over 10 frames, I could bring my second keyframe there and it will now do everything within that frame of time. All right, but we don't want to do that. We're going to delete our second keyframe and we will apply toggle hold to our very first keyframe. So remember, we right click on the keyframe, toggle hold keyframe. Okay. All good. We ready to do some cool stuff. All right. Um, always check, check. Yeah, aware. Okay. So what we're going to do next before we start animating anything is we're going to play through this audio and we're going to start blocking out the major mouth sounds. All right. So the best way we can do this is obviously starting off um, using our waveform as a visual reference. And then if I can introduce you to a cool little function for our timeline, you'll see that I'm hovering over on the far right what looks like a little shield icon, all right? So that's a little bookmark icon. And if I click on that, it will automatically be generated as a little marker on my timeline, which I can still move back and forth. If I want to get rid of it, I can drag it all the way to the right until that little shield icon is blue, and then I can let go, 
All right, so let's see where everything is. We're only going to be focusing on the expecto part. The Patronus part will be for you dudes to do for homework. So let's listen. Cool. So I can already see here, if I zoom in and start trying to time it out perfectly, we've got a little bit of a spike here in our audio, and this is where we start off with E. Cool. So that's E. I'll click here. And if I double click on the little um, bookmark that's been made on my timeline there, I can relabel this and I can say E. All right, so I can block the entire word out. So what you can do is you can either just follow me, uh, watch what I do, or you can start blocking out. Just focus on the expecto part. Okay, so let's take a look here. There's an X sound somewhere here. So I'm just going to do like a rough blocking. So we'll do X. P's around here somewhere. So that'll be P. X spec. There's an E here. And there's a T somewhere in here. And then there's the O at the end. All right. So these are definitely not in the correct position. All right. Um, what I've done is just my basic blocking out. And now I can zoom all the way into when I can see my frames. And I can start listening again to make sure. So let's see. Where does my E actually begin? It starts on frame five. So let's shift that up. X happens on frame seven. So we'll shift that back up. Let's see, so that's X, X. The P is actually over here. So we'll shift that up, expect. So the E is there, expect. Okay, the K sound is here. Uh, let's just see, spec about the, the K sound is here. So I'm just going to make a marker and call that K. And we can just shift these out by about two frames so that they don't move too quickly. So let's see. Yeah. All right. So for those of you who want to follow along perfectly, E lands on frame five. All right. The X sound from Expecto, that's our hard C. And so I've just called it X because that's what it sounds like. That's on frame seven. All right. Frame 15 is where the P is. Frame 17 is where we have our second E. 20, trust, I know how to spell expecto patronum, but again, this is a hard C, expecto patronum, right? So that sound sounds more like a K, so I'll label it like that. All right. T, uh, let's make sure that's in the right place. Yeah, so T is sitting on frame 22. The K is sitting on frame 20. All right, and then the O begins at frame 24. Okay, it's okay if yours isn't exactly like mine because you're going to be um, refining this for, for homework. Um, but this is kind of just your basic blocking out. So if you save a duplicate of this file, uh, you can use this for your homework for next week. Okay, are we all good? Now we can actually begin animating the mouth. And this is the part that's the most fun. Okay. So taking a look one last time at our mouth shapes, all right? I can close up lock and shy my audio. We don't need that anymore. I've blocked it out perfectly, all right? Well, not perfectly, but I've blocked it out, okay? And taking a look at the time remap, you'll see that obviously we have a keyframe. That's at the very start of our timeline. I'm just going to drag that a little bit forward to about here, All right, just a few frames before the actual E. And this is how we go about now adjusting our actual mouth shapes. All right, so you'll see that we have um, three, four sets of zeros. Right, The very first zero is hours from the left. Very second set, zero, zero there is our minutes. Zero, zero there is our seconds. And then finally, we have frames. All right, now you'll see that if you click and drag that little value, it will slide through our mouths. So I can find E, which is the second option. And uh, there we go. So now we've just blocked it so that our character is going to start at rest. So our very first keyframe, I'm going to scrub it all the way to the end and we'll set it to rest. We're there. Okay. So if you guys are struggling with the scrolling, 
what is very useful inside of uh, After Effects, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same in Illustrator as well. But if you hold down Command or Control and click and drag or change any kind of um, uh, property, right? So any kind of value, it is going to work in decimal points rather than full, um, you know, like full full frames, okay, or full seconds. So that's how holding down Command. That's how I go about setting this up. Okay, so my E is in. Let's find something for X. Now, we don't have mouth shapes for every letter, right? We don't have mouth shapes for every vocal sound that we make. Um, so when it comes to our mouth shapes, we set up to have the major vowel sounds and the major, the, the major mouth movements, okay? And we can always repurpose these. So going into my lip sync, where we have that X sound, I tend to use the SN, uh, no, the FV audio option. All right. So our very first keyframe, if you want the value, is set to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 13. All right. Our second keyframe is set to all zeros, 0, 4. Okay. X is set to all zeros, 16. Okay. Yeah. All good. Okay, so once I've got that done, X, then I can just go and I can start finding shapes that work for these. So if you scrub through, we do have something for P, right? It's the second last option, so that's 0109. E sound, I can be lazy and simply copy and paste from the first E. That K sound, I'll reuse. I can simply maybe copy that, and that K sound, I think I used. Spec. So yes, we use SN. Now the reason why we're using SN is because we can see a little bit of the tongue there, right? When we get to the T sound, so that would be the BT option over here, see, having seen that little bit of tongue allows us to subconsciously understand that when we move into the T, the tongue is obviously now at the, the front of the mouth behind the like your front teeth, right? And that's where the T sound is going to come from. So when we go to T, goes to there, and then finally we have the O sound. Like, so expecto. Okay, so if I play this back, it now works. Okay, are you guys okay? Are we understanding this process? Uh, is there anyone that needs me to re-explain how we go about adjusting our toggle hold frames here or how the time remapping works? Uh, no one. Cool. You guys are always on point, so I never need to worry about you dudes. Okay. Uh, check chat again. Um, so many messages. Just can't take the fact that a green pickle is saying this line seriously. I know. I love it. I wonder what pickle Rick's, well, I wonder what Rick's Patronus would be. But at the same time, I would also love to know what a pickle's Patronus would be. Like a jar of gherkins. Okay. So that's pretty much it for today, right? I don't need to introduce you to anything else. Um, so we can actually call it there. Uh, so we can sort of just quickly discuss your homework. And then part of that homework is going to be doing the rest of the patronum. Okay, so you're going to block out the mouth shapes for that patronum. Feel free to work with the eyelids if you would like. I don't need, uh, I don't need that for your homework. Um, sorry, one last thing. You don't need to do this, but I'm just going to show you in the video um, just to give you an idea. All right, so obviously we know that a lot of our emotion comes from eyebrows right? Uh, obviously also very prevalent in dogs. So um, I could go about creating eyebrows in a few different ways. Um, the first way is I could obviously make it an illustrator and then I could use the puppet pin tool or I could use the um, CC bender tool, all right? However, I want to show you that inside of After Effects, when we work with our pen tool, right? Shortcut for that is G because obviously P was taken for position. Um, we are able to draw out so I'm just going to click over here, click one more time, and then click third. 
Okay, so I've made three points. I can move those around, and this is what I'll use for my eyebrow. Okay, so what are my options here? I'm gonna relabel this shape layer one, and I'm gonna say eyebrow underscore R, and that's gonna be my right eyebrow. And I'm gonna go into the drop down contents over here. All right, so if I go into the contents, you'll see that we have shape one. This shape one just means that this layer only has one shape on it. You can have multiple shapes on a single layer. Okay, that means it's very important to always deselect any layer before you start working with your pen tool. All right, if you've got a layer selected like the head, for example, so if I quickly grab the head and I grab my pen tool, um, it's going to generate a mask when I close that shape. Okay, so we need to make sure we don't have any layers selected. Now, I did tell you guys last term that we do not work within the contents. All right, this is one of the few exceptions and this is just a basic setup for that. Okay, so the very first thing is I'm going to go down to stroke. I'll click the drop down there. Here's all of our options so we can change our color. We've got our opacity, the stroke width, and then we have line cap. All right, now line cap refers to how the end of our shape is interpreted. All right, so currently it's set to butt cap. Butt cap means it's got a straight line at the end and it ends parallel with the vertex. Okay, clicking that little drop down, I'm going to use the round cap. All right, so obviously that rounds out my edges over here. You'll see it hasn't done anything to this corner. It rounds out both edges and it extends the shape beyond the vertex. All right, our third option, projected cap, exactly the same as butt cap, except it's not parallel with the vertex. Okay, so let's use round cap. I can then close stroke. That's all I needed to do. And then I'm just going to hit the drop down for path and create a keyframe. Okay, so now this eyebrow is essentially set up. All I need to do now is grab the convert vertex tool, which we find hiding under our pen tool. Right. Remember, we can use this tool to add curves to our path. So I've simply clicked on my middle uh, vertex over here, dragging to the right. That then gives me my handles. Okay. And those handles are going to allow us now, as we animate, and do something like that. And that's how we would go about animating our eyebrows. Okay. So I'll set up. Uh, everything correctly for you guys, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but that was just an indication of how we can introduce eyebrows to a character. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at homework. That's literally all I needed to show you. So taking a look at our homework quickly. Uh, homework for week six. Okay, so finish your expected Patronum animation, render using media encoder, submit only your render file. Okay, you don't need to blink or anything like that. Um, Secondly, you're going to upload your, set, your, your final lip sync footage, right? So I don't think for this class I asked anyone to re-record, but if you do need to, that's fine. You can just post it here, okay? Um, even if I didn't tell you to post, all right? Even if I didn't tell you to, to upload or to change, rather, anything about your voice line, still like submit it here so that I've got a final collection for everyone, all right? Then... I want you guys to render your blocked out force and, uh, force and weight animation, half, like however far you've gotten, and then you can submit the render for that. Okay, uh, taking a look at the stream, I posted our term roadmap, so this can be found here. It can also be found in the Discord, right? So if I go to our MD100 Discord, Bronwyn was kind enough to pin the uh, the thing there for you as well. Okay, so if we take a look at that, this is just a general idea of where we're going to be by each week. So by week six, that's next week, fully blocked out our force and weight, fully blocked out and refined according to given feedback, no easing applied, all right? And the rest of it is there fairly self-explanatory. All right, lip sync, expected patronum, fully blocked out, only mouth shapes, no blinks or eyebrow animation necessary. By week seven, we're gonna have added some easing and we're gonna continue refining our force and weight. Lip sync, our personal footage will be completely blocked out, including blinks and eyebrow movements where applicable. Walk cycle, right? I'll be introducing you the, uh, to that next week. Your class exercise will be fully blocked out, no easing applied, all right? By week eight, force and weight should pretty much be finished at that point. Our lip sync, our easing, again, flipping 
typo, sorry about that, easing applied start refinements on the lip sync. Walk cycle, our personal walk cycle we will be blocked out with no easing. And then by week nine, everything is completed and ready. Okay, so I think by in week seven, we're going to have some compulsory feedback sessions for everyone, um, just so I can make sure we're all on the right track. Okay, are there any questions? Yo, that was a hideous pose there. Um, well, good, fantastic. Cool, uh, I'll then post this onto Classroom. I have also been posting this class, so MD108. I've been posting these videos onto the YouTube channel as well. Um, they're the most refined courses. We finished this in less than an hour, which is fantastic. The other, the other peeps took like the full two hours. All right, um, so you're welcome to bounce. If you don't have any questions, that's cool. Uh, and I'll check you guys next week. If you need any contact sessions, you let me know. Otherwise, that's us done. Cool. Cheers, Al. Stay well. Cheers.